Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video, and today we're going to be talking about Monster Hunter World. More specifically, we're going to be talking about the bow. As with all of my weapon videos, this is intended to give you guys some notions as to how this weapon works, show you a couple of interesting moves, and naturally provide you with a reason as to why you should use this weapon over any other weapon in the game. And when it comes to the bow, how would you like to make a pin cushion out of your enemies' faces by repeatedly pelting them with your deadly arrows, only to then finish off by penetrating them from face to tail with a deadly rocket-powered arrow that will just completely destroy their insides. You will be deadlier than both Apollo and Artemis combined, baby. That is the power of the bow. Before we actually get to the arrow shooting portion of this tips video, I wanted to bring your attention to a bow's coatings. Now, some of you guys might not be aware of what the hell a coating is, what's the deal with that, but essentially bows use a specific substance that you can coat your arrows with that will enable you to do different effects on monsters. Now, the types of coatings that you have available to you are close range, power, paralysis, poison, sleep, and blast. Now, these names are pretty self-explanatory. Close range coating deals more damage when you are in close range of the monster power coating just straight up deals more damage all over paralysis enables you to paralyze poison enables you to poison sleep enables you to put the monster sleep and blast enables you to use the blast uh, effect which essentially does explosions every now and then now why is it important for me to call out your attention to these coatings it is because depending on the bow that you craft you are going to be limited in your coating selection and naturally this should somehow influence your decision on which bow you want to craft so keep these things in mind so for instance if you look at the brazen cord over here you can see that it has close range coating sleep coating and blast coating now close range is actually not super important because every single bow in the game has infinite close range coating so that is just something that you always have in your tool regardless of which bow you have but this particular bow also has the effects of sleep and blast or the coating option of sleep and blast so you can use those specific coatings in order to inflict those status ailments and different bows will have different coatings like you have the rathalos tree over here it is going to have close range power and poison so power is that coating that actually just straight up increases the damage your arrows deal and poison will enable you to poison monsters so it's i think it's pretty obvious that you should take a close look at which bow you are planning on crafting and then making the decision on whether or not that bow is uh, good for your specific playstyle. Something that I would advise people that are just starting with the bow is try to at the very least get a bow that has power coating because power coating is just like one of the most straightforward things. It's just like, look, your arrows just flat out deal more damage, okay? It's a good bow for you to start out with. But hey, that doesn't mean that the other bows are trash, okay? It's just something that you need to learn and eventually when you will become more proficient with the bow, then you might be like, okay, I feel like I don't really need power coating as much and now I want to delve into all of these other uh, status ailments and things that I can do with the bow. But remember, when you craft your bow, always check the coatings that are available for that specific bow so that then you don't craft uh, like say an, an anja bow and be like what the hell this bow doesn't have poison what the hell man this right here is the bow and as you can see by looking to the top left hand side you'll notice there is no weapon gauge but don't let that fool you because there is quite a bit of depth to this particular weapon now, once you get your bow out, you will be able to aim the direction of your shots by pressing L2 or the left trigger. Now, once you do this, a targeting reticule shows up. Now, before we actually take any shots, I want you to pay attention to this targeting reticule. If there is nothing in your line of sights, if you are aiming towards nothing, this is what the reticule looks like. You got your three little slashes. Actually, let me aim at something yeah, darker so that you can see. You got the... Um, you got the white little dashes there as well as the white dot in the middle. This means you're not aiming anything. Once you start aiming at things, the targeting reticule changes. Now, it is important to pay attention to what your targeting reticule looks like because it's going to influence how good you are at using your bow. Now, say for instance, you want to shoot that thing over there, which is usually our main target. Notice how the targeting reticule over there is yellow and it only has one ring. Whereas if I aim to this barrel, that's a little bit, actually that barrel doesn't register. But if I aim to this barrel that is a little bit closer, you'll notice that the targeting reticule actually has two rings. Get it? You got this one, one ring, 
this one, two rings. So this is the concept of critical distance. That means that for this particular barrel, I'm at the critical distance. I'm going to be inflicting more damage than for this main target over there. So like if you notice, that's going to give us six damage. Whereas if I shoot over here, it's going to give me 11 damage. Okay, so that is the concept of critical distance. You always want to be at the critical distance of your target. So right there, critical distance achieved. Boom, 13 damage. If I move a little bit further back, we're out of critical distance range, back to six damage. So it is important for you to always be at the critical range or, you know, at least close to the critical range if you want to be maximizing your damage on your targets. Now, another important thing to keep in mind is that different coatings are going to have different critical ranges. So for instance, right now we don't have any coating applied to our arrows. So this is our critical distance. Now, if I go ahead and actually select a coating, we, you, can each, you can either use up and down on the D-pad to select different coatings, or you can press L1 and then use triangle and X if you've been using the, uh, if you've been playing previous Moss Hunter games, this might feel a little bit more familiar. Now, we're going to go ahead and apply close range coating. And if you notice, we're no longer at critical distance. I'm gonna remove close range coating, by applying coatings is triangle, by the way, or Y if you're on Xbox. But now that I've removed it, I am at uh, critical range. So it is important to note, like I've mentioned at the start of this video, close range coding allows you to deal additional damage on your targets so long as you are closer. So if we go ahead, pop that close range coding, notice the damage, you're going to deal five damage. But if we get a little bit closer, there, now we're at critical distance, 15 damage. So it's more than the 13 we were doing previously, but uh, you have to be closer to your target. So it's a little bit of a risk reward situation. One thing to keep in mind with coatings is that whenever you apply a coating to your arrows, that coating is going to be used every single time you fire a shot. So for instance, if I apply power coating right here and I start shooting arrows, even though the number doesn't diminish while we're here because we're in the training ground, so essentially it gives us infinite ammo for us to practice all of our shots. If you were actually out in the field uh, and you had your 50 power coatings, this shot would bring it down to 49. This would bring it down at this point to 47, and you keep firing. Now it's at 45. You fire five more shots, it's going to be at 40. So it's going to run out. So you do have to keep that in mind, and you have to make clever use of your coatings, okay? You can't just be like, oh, I'm just going to coat my arrows. Every single shot's going to be coated. Yeah, sure, you can do that with close range coating, which is infinite, but with power coating, you have to actually pick and choose when you want to use it versus when you don't want to use it. So keep that in mind. Its uses are limited. Same thing with paralysis coating. It's like, oh, I want to use some paralysis. I want to paralyze my target. Well, okay, just bear in mind that these are limited, Having said that, you can also bring materials in order to craft additional power coatings. In the case of power coatings, you can craft those by using um, fi empty files and nitro mushrooms. So essentially, you can take a bunch of empty files with you uh, and then join those with nitro mushrooms, which you can carry up to 20. Is it 20 or 10? I think you can carry up to 20 on you. And you will be able to craft uh, 20 additional power coatings on the go. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, so now let's talk about charged shots. So the whole point of the bow is that you are also able to charge your shots, thus inflicting more damage. So it has three charge levels. The first one is just a regular shot. You just press R2. That is your charge level one. If you keep it pressed, that right there, that glow is charge level two. And if you keep it pressed even longer... That right there is your charge level 3. Naturally, charge level 3 deals more damage. Charge level 1 deals less damage. But it's not always an option for you to just, like, stand still in front of a monster and charge tier 3 shots. Okay, so keep that in mind. You can do it, but you don't necessarily have to. And also, there are much more interesting ways of charging shots beyond just holding it down and then shooting. Another thing to keep in mind is that there are different types of shots that you can do so you can also do an arc shot if while you are charging you press circle that right there is the arc shot that basically fires a, a shot that essentially makes those rocks fall down from the sky uh, the level of charge on your bow is going to influence how hard that hits so for instance this is a tier one charge shot All right notice how it's dealing one damage every now and then 
That right there is going to be a tier 2 arc shot. Notice how it hits more often. And if you charge it all the way, that is a tier 3 arc shot, which is going to hit even harder. Now, the cool thing about the arc shot, which you can do by basically pressing the right trigger in circle, and depending on the level of charge that you have, it's going to deal more or less damage. But the cool thing about the arc shot is that if you're able to hit this in the monster's head, there is a high probability that you will stagger the monster, that you will exhaust the monster, that you will KO the monster just straight up. So it's a very useful shot. However, if you are playing in a multiplayer session, bear in mind that these shots also cause your teammates to get interrupted. Like if someone's trying to do a jumping attack and they run into one of your shots, they're going to get knocked back. If someone's trying to do a combo and they get hit by one of your shots, they're going to get interrupted. Uh, basically, this is going to cause your teammates to flinch. So, you know, be a little bit respectful and don't go like ham wild by just like, oh, look at all the arc shots, dude, look at it. I'm making it rain, making it rain. And your teammates are going to be walking in the middle of all that garbage and just like not be able to be effective at all. Okay, so keep that in mind. You should definitely use arc shots, but you should also be aware of what other people are doing. Also, if other people are infl inflicting status ailments such as uh, sleep, uh, you also should keep that in mind. Okay, because this shot will wake up the monster and it is going to completely screw over sleeping stuff. So, yeah, I've been screwed over by arc shot quite a few times, okay? That's all I'm saying. Anyway, you guys also saw me do a different kind of shot there, which was um, the power shot, uh, which is essentially by pressing circle after you do a regular shot. So that right there is the power shot. You can also do a quick shot, which is basically like a spread shot by pressing circle. So that spread shot is going to hit three times. It actually deals more damage than if you just hit like that. But the difference is you actually have to hit all three shots. So you're going to have to be pretty damn close to the monsters if you want to, you know, really take advantage of that quick shot. However, you know, whatever you do with a bow, if you do it in quick succession, it is going to increase your charge level. So, for instance, this is tier one. That's tier two. Okay? And if you go... Shot into power shot into arc shot. That last arc shot is going to be tier 3, as you can see. Okay, so keep this in mind. Anything that you do with the bow is going to raise its charge level so long as you do it right after whatever the hell you were doing. So, like, if you do rapid fire R2, that's charge 1, charge 2, charge 3. And as you can see, that's actually faster than charging your bow. So if you want to just go for DPS, you can actually do this. And it is going to be much better than trying to do this, you know, and just going all out to the three. You can also just get, like, one charge and then fire immediately after. You know, you, you can figure out which way you want to fire. I'm not going to give you, like, a combo that is going to do everything for you because, to be honest, what I've noticed with the bow is that it is extremely situational which shot you want to use at which time. I'm, I'm sure that someone is even going to come in the comment section and say, no, 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 the best thing to do is fire three shots, and after you do the three shots, go for circle, circle, and circle again. And it's like, sure. You're going to do a lot of damage by doing that, but look at how long you are firing, you know? Like, what if the monster is moved? Is this still the most optimal damage combo? Like, I don't know. As a matter of fact, you can even add something else at the end of that combo if you really want. You can go boom, 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 into circle, circle, and circle, and at the end, boom, Dragon Piercer! You guys are like, holy crap, Rurikan, what the fuck was that? Tell us more about that last one. Tell us more about that last one, man. What the hell was that? So that right there is the Dragon Piercer. You can see that it is a very simple move. All you have to do is press triangle and circle. And it will fire. However, this is going to be affected by the level of charge that you have on your bow. So basically, if you are at charge 1, notice that right there is going to be a Dragon Piercer tier 1. 30 damage. But if you are at charge 2... That is going to be 32, and naturally, if you are at charge 3... Boom. You're going to be at 36, which is the maximum uh, damage. Even though there is an additional charge level, which I will discuss a little bit further ahead in the video, for now, let's just go with the, the three charge levels that you have. So, basically, the Dragon Piercer is going to be a penetrating ability. 
And that means you're going to be able to pierce multiple targets. So as you can see, these barrels are kind of lining up a little bit. Let me see if I can line up this shot. Which means that you should be able to hit the pole and then hit the, the, all of the barrels behind it. Using the dragon piercer. Yep, we hit all of the barrels, as you guys can see. So it is important that when you are lining up this shot, you want to fire this either directly into the monster's face so that it penetrates the monster, goes through the entirety of the monster, all the way into the tail, and hopefully still shoot through the tail, or you shoot it directly at its tail, and it goes through the tail all the way and ends up in his face. That's like one of the best ways of doing it. If you are able to get to the monster's wingspan, that's also really good. You shoot it from the side, and if the monster has its wings like all stretched out, and you're able to perfectly time it, it's gonna be a lot more challenging. But you can do that as well, and it will pierce through the wings multiple times, all the way into the from one wing to the other, and it will deal tons of damage. But ideally, the, the, the point here is you want to line yourself up in a way where you are hitting the monster for, in its longest possible section so that your arrow travels through and deals as much damage as possible. And that is the Dragon Piercer. And essentially, you can do it in the middle of any combo. So you can be firing... Right, you do that, that, and then you go for a power shot, and an arc shot, and then, boom, Dragon Piercer, right? Another thing to keep in mind is that once you reach that maximum uh, charge level, like I said, because you can do it, you can reach it by doing anything, basically, with the bow, if you are shooting, just like, shoot anything you want, and you can reach the max charge. So long as you keep firing, you will be at that max charge. So like, say, I do one, two... Three max charge, circle max charge, max charge, max charge, dragon piercer max charge. So just keep that in mind. Now, let's talk about something that is extremely important that you guys no doubt have noticed. As we were firing all of these amazing shots and getting the charge up, you notice that our stamina is like going to hell. You know, like we're out of stamina. Once you run out of stamina, that's it. The fun is over, the charge is gone, you have to start from scratch. Now, naturally, considering that you're using your stamina as much, you need to be careful so that you're still able to dodge from the monster's attacks. Like, you don't want to go all bomb easy and just like, oh, yeah, yeah, take all these shots, take all of them. Here, have a dragon piercer, you know? You, you can't do that because eventually if you run completely out of stamina, the monster's going to come up to you. Oh, you can't dodge. Oh, let me have some fun with your face now. And, you know, you're just going to get completely pummeled. So an important thing, extremely important thing when you are using the bow, in my opinion, is make sure that your stamina is maxed out. I'm going to pop a couple of rations here. And just like with my dual blades video, you might want to consider using um, dash juice because it's going to improve your stamina. Like just to give you guys an idea, look at how many shots you can perform uh, with this while you have max stamina, right? And now you want to go into circle, because for some reason the monster is closer. I'm just basically spending my shots as fast as possible. See, we're running out. Now I'm going to finish it off with the Dragon Piercer. Which is actually not even max level, because we already finished um, the gauge faster. Now, if you actually use Dash Juice... Notice the difference right now. Okay, max tier. Boom. Max tier. Boom, max. I'm basically using the moves that spend the most stamina. And notice how many more moves I can do. Even though I still lost the Dragon Piercer at the end there. But you can do that a lot more times. And it's like, you're not always going to be doing the arc shot, power shot combo. You really shouldn't. I was just doing a move that was going to spend my stamina faster. You should be weaving in power shots in between those. You know? Just keep in mind that when you go from um, power shot into charge shot, you're going to lose the charge level, okay? That's also something I hadn't mentioned, sorry. So basically you wanna save your power shots and stuff like that to the end, and then the dragon piercer to the very end of your combo, unless the monster is lined up perfectly for a dragon piercer, at which point you just wanna really line yourself up, like say the monster uh, is from this pole all the way over to that barrel, you really wanna line yourself in a way and then just charge it all up, even if it's the slow way. Then press triangle circle, get your max charge dragon piercer. Boom! Okay, so now let's talk about the sidestep. 
So while you are, you can dodge with a bow, right? You press X and you dodge just like with any other weapon. But with the bow, you have a really cool thing, which is if you aim and you dodge while you're aiming, it is going to charge your bow. So that right there is a charging sidestep, okay? And if you dodge multiple times, you can charge your bow multiple times. And right now, we can only really charge twice to get us to tier 3, right? So we can go 1, 2, and that's going to be a max tier dragon piercer. So if you're in a hurry to actually line up that shot, it's actually particularly good because sometimes monsters will fall in front of you, right? So say, for instance, that the monster is facing that barrel that we've been shooting at, and you're actually facing the monster like this. And the monster fell down in front of you. What you can do is reposition into the Dragon Piercer, and that is not only going to help you maintain your charge, but also line up the shot to really go into the Dragon Piercer shot and get the maximum value for it. So keep that in mind. And so long as you can dodge, you can maintain that maximum charge for as long as you want. Okay? We're still at maximum charge. And now we ran out because we couldn't keep dodging anymore. So therefore, one of the really important armor skills for you to consider when it comes to bow is constitution. Keep that in mind. Constitution is going to give you the same effect that you have with the dash juice. It's got five levels or something like that. But it is definitely something that you should keep in mind for your bow set. An important thing to note with the charging sidestep is that it is going to be focusing the same spot you shot previously so long as you sh took a shot before you did the charging step. I know that sounds kind of weird, but take this scenario for instance. You want to shoot at this target, but for some reason you need to dodge to the right and you want to keep pelting it. Well, essentially, you can take your shot, dodge to the right, shoot again, and your character is going to be aiming at that same spot. As a matter of fact, you can repeat this step as many times as you want, so long as you have enough stamina. And your character is going to be always aiming at that spot so long as you do not move your targeting reticule by using the right analog stick. And that is, uh, it's pretty cool to keep you on the move and shooting at stuff, you know what I'm saying? Another note on the bow's sidestep is that it's got a lot of reach when it comes to a dodge. So a lot of times you're better off doing a charging sidestep if you are trying to dodge a monster. And it also positions you just right for landing a couple of shots. So always keep that in mind when you are dodging. It doesn't have any invincibility frames or anything like that. But if you are able to avoid the monster entirely, you don't need iframes and you're able to instantly counter as soon as the mob is past you. It's pretty good for dodging, so keep that in mind. So let's talk about the bow's aerial game, which unfortunately is not really that much. Most ranged weapons don't have a huge aerial game, so when it comes to the sliding, you're going to be able to draw into a charged attack. So basically, you can be charging all the while while you are sliding, but you don't really get anything particularly great out of it. You can also jump if you want to, and the advantage of jumping is that will actually go into a melee attack, and this will allow you to mount, so you can do that into a melee attack. This does do mounting damage, so it will allow you to mount, but usually the more useful thing to do is just to draw into a charging shot, and you can actually come out of it and just pop a dragon piercer if you want to, but that's what I would do with these sliding attacks probably most of the time, unless I'm trying to mount, at which point I can try to pull a jump into a triangle. Uh, once you go off a ledge, it's pretty much the same thing that you just saw here. You can press triangle for a jumping melee attack, or you can also do a charged shot from the air. So you can shoot, or you can just, like, charge the shot and stand the charge uh, if you want to, but that's pretty much the aerial game of the bow, unless you have mushroom walls available to you. And these actually have a really cool thing, and that is that if you are aiming your bow and you do a charging sidestep into the wall, your character's gonna do this. Now, you can kind of aim it, but it's a little bit tricky. If you guys notice, if you aim your camera and just try to aim your character in that general direction, your character will shoot. So, like, right there, we're actually shooting a little bit more to the right side. There we're at, But, I mean, by default, it's just gonna shoot to the exact opposite side of you. But it is pretty cool. does a little bit of damage. So, yeah, keep that in mind. But you are able to aim it a little bit to the side. Just use your left and right sticks to aim the camera in that direction. But it is a little bit tricky, okay? But you can pull it off. And it is a pretty flashy move. It, it's like the one flashy move that you get as a bow user. You can still use the default of just like running in there. And then getting your 
aerial melee if you're trying to get a mount off or get the shot just like whenever you're jumping off of a ledge but an important thing to mention is that you actually have an attack that you can mount from neutral which is an interesting thing for a bow user but that's basically you do a charging sidestep in any direction and then you press triangle the character pulls out the, uh, the arrow and just does a lunging melee attack and that particular attack can do mounting damage okay so keep that in mind because you can actually mount from neutral and it is kind of a big deal if you're trying to cc a monster mounting from neutral is pretty damn cool now those of you that know about the bow and maybe you even know about the set that i'm using right now you guys will probably recognize this specific set as being the set that actually gives you access to an additional charge level with your bow however i on purpose removed the helmet throughout this tutorial so that i could show people with just a typical two charges but for the purpose of finishing this particular video i would like to bring out the full set and show you guys that you can actually have access to an additional tier of charge if you craft this this specific set so one two three so you actually get access to an additional tier of charge which is going to do more damage so 17 21 25 into 28 this will also affect every other attack that you do so this particular set is also going to require more stamina to maintain um because you're going to be spending a bunch of stamina getting to your max tiers and then you're going to want to maintain those max tiers for as long as possible that right there is a tier 4 dragon piercer so yeah but yeah this set gives you access to more charges and it's cool because you can keep charging so long as your mana can endure and you will deal more damage on that last charge whether or not that is worth it for you depends on how well you can maintain your stamina now personally as someone who's been using this set um it's like to me it feels uh it feels like you definitely need additional uh, bonus to your stamina to really take full advantage of this particular set at least that's the way that i personally feel i could be wrong because like i said i'm not a bow expert i'm just trying to get people started with the bow because there were a lot of requests for me to do a bow video but in order to maintain the stamina required to stay in that charge level it just feels like it's insane all right look at that and then you're gonna pull out that massive dragon piercer it is pretty beast mode. It does deal a lot more damage, but it also costs you a lot more stamina. So again, keep up with those dash juices. Uh, and this is not, by the way, just because this set has a an additional level of your charge, do not think that this is the best set you could possibly ever have for an archer, because I still think that there is a lot of value in different sets in the game that give you different benefits. So feel free to explore and don't think that, oh, the friggin' Legiana set is the end-all be-all for archers, you know? It's, it's, I think there's more to it than that. And that's pretty much all the tips that I got for you bow users out there. Hopefully this video helped you out in figuring out the stuff that you want to be doing with the bow. Hopefully you haven't crafted a bow that didn't have the coatings that you wanted and uh yeah just keep in mind that stuff like dragon piercer as well as power shot are both affected by the coatings as well it's not just the charge shot so your dragon piercer you want to make sure that you got your power coating or your close range coating to really take as much advantage of it as possible um however your arc shot i don't believe that is affected by your coatings not entirely sure but i don't think it is i also don't think it actually uses coatings when you pop a charge shot in the middle of all the other shots that you're doing but yeah the thing about the bow is keeping that max charge going for as long as you can so it requires a lot of stamina management make sure that you don't run out of stamina otherwise the monsters are going to basically pummel you because you're not going to be able to dodge attacks and yeah, it's a lot about stamina management and figuring out what bow type works for you. Personally, I crafted the um, Kadachi Strike Bow because it's got lightning damage or thunder damage. And thunder damage seems to be particularly effective at a large amount of monsters in the game. And since I'm probably only going to really have one or two bows, I wanted to have one that is useful in a multitude of situations. Uh, pretty soon I will be working on the uh, other ranged weapons, so the heavy bow gun as well as the light bow gun, since you guys have asked so much, but those are a lot simpler than any of the other weapons, and I do mean simpler in terms of like the amount of moves available to them. It's mostly about the customization of the gun and the ammunition 
that you're firing, which in a way it's also a lot about that with the bow with the different coatings and stuff that you have access to. But anyway, let me know if this video helped you out uh, in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.